The JavaScript knows. Well, because you generate a JavaScript file and push it down the client. Not on this. The, uh, the document files don't get a JavaScript. No, 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 that's what I'm saying, but it would be this <coughs> Yeah, but what would you push down to a document client that will give you that hard reference, right? So I would love to do things like. Um, uh, I see what you're saying. I mean, it's no, just wonder. Instead of doing this, I would love to say signal chat hub dot join chat and have it type safe, but I cannot because for good or bad, they do not have a hard reference to the server and there's no um, reflection to figure out what the server has so far. Maybe that's going to change. Okay. Um, so what I was trying to do was do a PCL. Remind me where that would be? C sharp? Yeah, it'll be over C sharp, but I think it's lower. Where? Uh, you'll have to actually scroll down. Oh, right. oh there we go. Okay, so you guys know about PCLs? This is really cool because now they're letting you share code between phone, Xbox, uh, Windows, Silverlight. Uh, this guy is like the lowest possible denominator, I think, because uh, this guy kind of restricts you back to .NET 4.0. So that's not going to give you a whole lot. So if you do not need to target Xbox, a lot of this stuff can be shared. Which is really nice because if you are making a Windows 8 application, you can easily write a Windows Phone application now. Because what you do is use some patterns like MVVM and have your most of your business logic and the processing in your PCL as just simple like CS classes. And then refer to that add that project in your uh, Windows Phone or Windows 8 app, and then just put a UI on top of it. Now, <clears throat> to extend this, I mean, I'll get to your point in a second, but to extend this even forward, um, you guys know about Xamarin? Yeah? They're the mono guys, and they're doing incredible work. Um, this is not out yet, but I'm told that Xamarin support for PCL is coming very, very soon, which means I can create a PCL here with my logic, my business logic for my Windows 8 app, and then I can fire up a Xamarin app and use that in an iOS app, right? So that would be really, really cross-platform utilization of code, which is fun. So let's try this, and we are on our own, but let's see if we can... That's what you wanted, right? Just to see if the NuGet would work on that? Right, yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, because it's in mono in the beta. It's got some dependencies, but it's not like it. <laughs> can't figure the package out there. Um, so no, not yet. Well, jump on your, uh, you know, chat thing, Damien. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Fix it right now. If you're gonna jump on Jabber dot net, fire away. No, literally, I mean, he, he, they're very responsive on that on that site. Um, so yeah, that's not there yet. But, okay, so you were trying to do a PCL and do this because you can have, like on the clients, I'm trying to see what you're going to gain with this. Like you're going to have the... Well, I, was, I guess the, uh, the thought I had was that if you did it in a PCL and you passed back um, like an observable, mm -hmm. um, you could actually, you could MVVM bind to an observable. So you're, you're, like in our case, the chat logic could stay in a PCL and then the phone and the 8 can just work with whatever is being handed down right, as a collection. Yeah. Make sense? Not there yet. Okay. Um, Sam is really going to try kicking me out here. It sounds odd. Sam is going to kick out Sam. Okay. Recursive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, um, don't close your eyes towards the other stuff, because again, I mean, the uh, real-time stuff, I mean, this is nothing new. We have had this challenge for the last five years, and people like us in other technology stacks have figured out other ways of doing things. I have not used these things personally, so I cannot speak for it, but there are things like Socket.io, uh, which uh, works with the Node.js backend. There are things like Now.js, which is again a JavaScript. It's like almost every single morning you wake up, there is a new JavaScript library, isn't it? <laughs> um, but it's a very rich ecosystem nowadays. Here's what you get with SignalR. 
it, you get native.NET and very, very easy. Um, I have actually known a guy who does socket IO a lot, and he says that it's not as easy as we have it here. It's really job dead simple. Um, this part is not true anymore. You don't need anything. WebSocket is now built in support. Um, oh, actually, you know what? I missed out showing you guys something really cool. So, bear with me one second. Let me close this guy out. the same one that we saw before. If I go in here and say, wait, where are my properties? I have too many things. See, see what the Kendo and the Jake just, just things do to you? A lot of properties. Okay, now, when we want to run this, okay, I'm trying to pick my server here. Okay, see this guy? By default, it's uh, the Visual Studio development server. This is your Cassini server that's inbuilt. You can also choose to go with local IIS, which is going to run here. Now, if we run this guy, guess what the difference is between those two right now? When I say local IIS, it's not using Cassini anymore. And this is Windows 8, which means it has IIS 8, right? So one this thing now. Same that application, right? But now we're going to do, I'm going to find me an F12 here. Uh, F12. Okay? And while that's on, we're going to refresh this page. You can you can see it. I think with the network, you can see also. It it's not quite as robust as uh, what you get out of Chrome. Let's uh, let's do Chrome. Let me just know that there. Control C. Let's see if we can find this, this guy and see what, what went on. Okay, first call, hubs. Hey, I'm trying to use hubs, right? Second call. Um, This is because I'm running Windows 8 and I have IIS. And my server says, oh, I can do WebSockets. Can you? And the browser turns back and says, yes, I can. So look at the next, the next response here, the next iteration. 101 switching protocols. Because this means I have, see that transform there? WebSockets. When this works, it's the fastest and the best possible transport. But you, you guys see that it needs a whole lot of things. It needs the server and it needs the browser to be, uh, to be like, new. Does it use a, a secure WebSocket by default? I have no clue. <laughs> Find out. I do not know. Okay, um, moving on. This is because our community is very smart. They have seen what the C# -sharp folks have done and the JavaScript folks have done with SignalR. Somebody has taken it up and wrapped it natively in Objective C, which means that if you're doing iOS, you can drop an Objective C compliant, um, what's the DLL thing in iOS? I don't even know. Something, you can drop something in your iOS project which makes makes uh, this stuff working. And also, you can do Mono, which means you can do Android. You can do this in Java, right? So, just look around, I mean, uh, these links are here, I, they're on my website if you really want to go ahead, but you can just search for them and find it, so. Um, 8.34, so was this interesting? Was it 
Well, we kind of went from web to client, but I just find this exciting because of the possibilities that, that present itself. Questions? What, what else do you guys think about? Where do you think see this being applied? Any any other thoughts? Yeah, on the chat application and you know your typical just real time communication stuff. And there's a problem I was dealing with today. We have a bug. Tell our control so <laughs> uh, we're using your notification, and we're we're just we've got a bit of you know the client side JavaScript that uh, you know just pulls. And every time a page is reloaded, it checks for our last load, you know, for a session timeout that we had set in the web config. Um, but we notice when doing this on a client, with the RAD notification, there's there's a bug with the loading animation because I don't know why, it's just something funky in the JavaScript. So instead of doing that, you know, I figured we could just log the, the last login time, the last time they hit a page, and then push it down from the server and just say, hey, you're logged out. Yeah, I mean, if, uh, if one, of the, one of the difficulties in that, though, is that we have this huge application that's, that's almost all, you know, web forms, ASP.NET Web Forms 3.5, because we've got all these, you know, clients out there from with older copies of Windows servers. Mm -hmm. So one of my questions is that, you know, can this, I know it requires ISA for some of these features, but can you do this, you know, self-hosted? Any other stuff? So if they just have four or five on a machine, can I, you know, create a self-host for it? And just, I, I cannot know, speak a whole lot to it. I just I have not done this. But uh, you're referring to Owen, yeah. Owen clients, right? So they have Owen yeah, uh, nuggets for hosting this type of application. Yeah. Right. Um, if we went back to this guy here, let's. let's And that's the Redis uh, messaging bus. Windsor for dependency injections. I have not used a whole lot of other ones, but you, you have some choice, looks like. Okay. Um, what else? I think that's pretty much all that I wanted to maybe hit. So um, I'm not trying to sell you guys on this technology, it's just something I'm just saying I'm excited. It seems easy enough for me to do, and it helps me hit multiple platforms and um, have that real time communication uh, across all platforms with a single backend server, which is ASP.NET. All right, so that's all I have, Sam. Sorry we went a little over. No, great. Highly appreciate your effort, and uh, it's good to share with you. That was definitely. Uh it was a very good presentation. I like how you, even though you weren't planning on selling it, you did sell it. <laughs> <laughs>